Hey everyone, Theo here with Believe Hi-Fi and today I'm finally getting into the review of the Hegel H390 integrated all-in-one amplifier. Before I do jump in though to clear up any confusion, the amplifier next to me is the H95, which is the entry level model to the integrated lineup by Hegel, whereas the H390 is the second to only the H590. So it, it sort of goes the H3, uh, H95, H190, H390, and H590. And the reason I've got that there now is, you saw in all my last videos, the H390 was sitting there for a long time while I was putting it through its paces. And I was doing a lot of AB demos between the two. And now this amplifier gets its turn to go through a lot of listening tests, whether it's with or without other components attached to it. And depending on which speaker I go for, either the, um, the classic or the D line, because that's what I currently have in here for testing. Now, a bit into how I tested this amplifier. So the H390 I utilized by itself completely in terms of ethernet straight into it for streaming with no DACs connected, nothing, just that unit. So basically I'm testing it as a true all-in-one for streaming, playing, everything. I also tested it with the Inuus. So that way the Inuus was now taking care of the streaming and then you could actually go through something like Rune, which to me is a little bit better. Then I also tested it with the Chord TT2 and the Chord TT2 M Scalar combination as well and the Chord Cutest. The reason I did this is obviously to see how does the DAC perform internally versus using a very well known and highly regarded external DAC. The other thing I did obviously was different speakers different power cables into it. And finally, obviously, I had the H95 right next to it to sort of go back and forth. And obviously, hearing these speakers many times and hearing different amplifiers over, I mean, I've been a super enthusiast for now 11 years in terms of being a really, really big enthusiast and just spending so much time. So, I just want to dive straight into it today. The H390 is a very, very hard to beat amplifier. Why? It doesn't do anything wrong. There's absolutely nothing that you could say, if you pull this into your system, and let's just say you're not using some ridiculous, like let's say Focal Grand Utopias or, or something like this, which they probably do some justice, but not all the justice. It's a product where, what can you really complain about? Not much, not, not much. Yes, you can get more. Yes, you can get better and dial in this and dial in that in terms of maybe a DAC or obviously the 590, but you get a performance that's very sure-footed and you get a lot of room, bottom end control, and you get a sound that's never harsh, not warm, but maybe if I had to play, play sides, I would say tipping on a slightly warmer side of neutral, maybe but it plays pretty down the line in, in, in my opinion, especially as a pure amplifier. Was I impressed? Absolutely. But I knew I would be to some degree, um, but I was, and I am very impressed with the H390 to the point where if someone said to me, you know, recommend me an amplifier that is under 10 grand, that can pretty much do everything, uh, I've got a decent set of speakers. I would say, well, under 10 grand, save yourself quite a bit of coin instead of you know the H590 yet. Maybe I'd recommend that if they want to use their whole budget, but almost at half the price, you know, under the six grand euros mark, I'd probably say have a serious listen to the H390. Now, characteristics of the amplifier, it's not so straightforward. 
because this is an all-in-one. It has an inbuilt DAC. And the biggest surprise point for me on this amplifier is the inbuilt DAC. The inbuilt DAC is fantastic. It is really, really impressive for an integrated amplifier. And it's something where it just kind of completes the sound in a way that is never edgy. You never really lose solidarity of the center and you get a nice sound stage and you get a very almost or organic like sound from the DAC. And I haven't said that about, I don't think any integrated amplifiers DAC at under the six, seven K price point. So I have to really give top marks when it comes to the digital to analog converter in here. It was to me, and I think maybe one of the biggest jumps between this generation and the last generation was the performance of the DAC. Meaning when, if I used an external DAC and then I compared it to the internal, the gap was much wider before. Now the gap is starting to close. And I wanna stay on the DAC for a little bit longer. I keep swapping between saying DAC and DAC, but you know, that's fine. That's just one of my many quirks. But with the DAC, right, let's compare to something like the Chord Cutest, because this would probably be seen for a lot of people as the best sort of entry into getting a DAC of good quality. Um, you know, you might consider something from Denifrips or someone else. And yes, I have heard them, but let's talk about the Chord and what you get. So the first thing I notice when I'm swapping into something like a chord DAC is the sound signature gets a little bit, a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit less warm and rounded straight away, swapping from the internal H390 DAC to a chord DAC. It becomes a little bit less soft and round around the edges and a little less warm, just a tad. And at that point, then to me, the amplifier is totally neutral. So for me, it's actually saying the amplifier is dead neutral. It's the DAC that's sort of flavoring things in a slight way. And when I swapped to the cutest or when I was a being, it was a very simple set of trade-offs that I realized. With the Hegel, I had a more solid, grounded piece of music in front of me, where especially the center image felt more there and tangible. And if I had a vocalist there, or you listen to a live performance where there's, let's just say a main center point of that live performance as a guitarist who's also singing, you know, and everything's right there. I had a better feeling of a tangible center image a lot of the time with the H90 internal DAC. But what did I get with the cutest? So with the chord cutest, I got a wider soundstage. I got better separation. I got a slightly, as I said, less rounded warm sound. It's not night and day, but slightly less rounded and warm sound. And you kind of get this trade-off. So with the chord, I felt like I was getting more details, more width. And when I played some of my test tracks that have a lot of different horns in them, and I like to do this because you sort of get a very good sense of the timbre and the timing as well. Because when you're discerning the different horns and what they're meant to be and how they sound, I find it's a really good test when you're trying to test timing and, and, and timbre performance. So for me, it was kind of, it was a trade-off. And I'm a little bit sometimes biased towards having a very nice, solid, grounded, tangible center image, especially with a vocal focus track. And in those types of musical arrangements, I would say I wouldn't spend the money from on this piece to go to the cutest as an upgrade. I would say that's not where I would spend the money. 
I would spend that same money and go for the like something like the Inuus as a music player because then you can utilize Rune and again there's a tangible difference noticing going from the internal network player versus having it external. I mean having the power supply is separate and we don't need to go all that through all that today. But if it came to that upgrade, I would go for the the Inuus. And again, I mean, you could just say, I'll use my laptop straight into there so I can use Rune or whatever, but you're gonna lose fidelity again. A, a laptop's a very noisy, non-optimized source. So for me, I would say, yeah, the Qtus is probably technically a little bit better, in my opinion, especially if I'm listening to classical or large scale orchestra music or um, jazz, some electronic music as well. Um, a lot of different music, but I like to listen to a lot of, you know, vocal intimate type recordings. So I have to give the H390 very, very high marks when it comes to that. But when I then went into say the TT2, and especially the TT2 with the M scaler, anything that I felt I lost on that solidarity became actually much better solidarity, better center focus, more weight, more grounded, plus even more width, more detail, more space, more accurate timbre, and especially with the M scaler engaged into the chain. So if you're gonna upgrade the DAC, I would say don't take a step, take a jump because that step, I don't think you're gonna be overwhelmed and excited about the change that you get. Now, moving on from what I was raving about on the DAC, cause that's really high praise to say that it pulls it, you know, it pulls no punches against something like a Chord Cutis or the RME too actually. It's actually a little bit more towards that kind of presentation slightly with that more solid image, but you lose a little bit here. So, yeah, it, it's sort of there, but let's go away from the DAC performance. It's an amplifier. It's super highly capable. With these speakers, with the, D, uh, the D7.2s, it just gave me this warmth, depth, natural, organic sound that I was looking for when I was playing these cozy, warm tracks. So I'm not saying the amplifier was warm, but I'm saying when you play one of those cozy, warm, like let's say um, Tracy Chapman, um, when I'm listening to a song like um, Baby Can I Hold You Tonight or something like this, it just let me just sink into the song. You know, the song is warm and inviting. It made it sound warm and inviting and full and lush. Or if you listen to another staple that probably a lot of you heard, like Nora Jones, Come Away With Me, that warm, lush, alluring sound. It, it helped to complete that feeling within the system. And in comparison to a lot of amplifiers I've owned in my life, I mean, I've had a lot of separates. The one thing I really like about this amplifier is it never seems to feel like it's losing grip or losing control when you're really turning the volume up. I had someone in here the other day and he was really turning the, the, the music up on this live jazz and vocal performance that um, he had on, on CD that we were playing. And he was pushing it. Like, I don't listen that loud. He's one of these guys, he turns it right up. And I was waiting for it to, to start to fall apart or crack around the edges. And it just maintained it so nicely. And I have to, at the price point, you almost have to give it top marks. I mean, I think if you went separates on something else and you spent around the exact same price, you might be able to better it, but then you lose the functionality, the form factor, the fact that it's an amazing DAC, you know, it, you, you lose so many things by doing that. Um, it might not be the prettiest integrated in terms of not having a screen and having you know, whatever, that many features, but in terms of how it sounds and the amplification performance and the DAC performance, it's fantastic. Now I wanna jump into 
what if you went for the H95 versus the H390? Because this is really where you, you notice what a better amplifier does. Straight away, when I pulled the H390 out of the chain and put in the H95, the depth and the width just kind of squashed. And, and not only that, the, the, the sound or the acoustic signature became thinner. It was like the sound of the, the audio I was getting with the H390, it's like you've got an elastic band and you've just sort of left it like this. You've, you've grabbed it and you're holding it, but you're not pulling it. And when I had the H95 in the chain, especially when I'm listening to a little bit higher, it feels like you've sort of stretched that elastic band, if you know what I mean. And now it's quite, it feels a bit thin and stretched and tight. And then you go back to the H390 and it's robust. You got that low end, you got that width, you got that composure. So that's kind of how I would sum it up as an analogy. You get much, much better performance out of the H390, but in saying that, the H95 is no slouch. I enjoy, I can easily enjoy pulling everything out just using the H95, these speakers or the, the D7s. I feel like these are like a bit more, really a lot more body. Um, and, and the D7s, while they are a bit more picky, somehow the match didn't lose quite as much with the with the H95, but alone at the price it is, it's fantastic. But if you have the extra money to spend between the H95 and the H390, and for you that difference isn't, you know, gonna, gonna break you, you're gonna hear a significant improvement to the control, the bass, the depth, the soundstage width, the composure, the enjoyment factor. It's just, it's quite a night and day comparison, which is when I wanna talk a little bit about investing money and what this might teach you about where to put money. So let's say I had the H95 into a TT2 and M scaler and the Inuus, and I had that full system kitted out or I had just the H390, I would go with the H390. The thing is, amplification is so important. If you don't give enough, I think it's the first thing you need to make sure you're doing when it comes to your components. You need to make sure the amplifier has enough guts and, it, it, and, it's, and it's, it's enough to really control the speakers. I would say by far I would rather go for, if I was spending money, I would rather go for the H390 over the H95 with all the other components I mentioned, which would cost way more money than an H390 by itself. But that's sort of the difference in amplification level that I was getting. Sure, you'd have some minor differences in terms of improvements going the other way, but the raw performance is, is fantastic. The other thing I wanna mention is power cables. Oh, cable guy, yeah, okay. If you, if, if you don't wanna hear this, skip, skip one minute, two minutes ahead, totally fine. But going from the stock cable to, um, let's say the Vermouth Black Pearl, which is probably the highest level cable that I have, it doesn't change your life, but if there's one cable in your system that's gonna make a difference and you go, I don't believe in cables, go to your store, ask them, can I borrow a mains cable or a power cable? Plug that sucker into your amplifier. That's where you should spend the money more than speaker cables, more than anything else. Trust me, that that's, that's where it is. And when I changed the cable, I mean, I went up, but let's go from the base cable to the, the, um, the black pearl from Vermouth. Everything I said, that you got from the H390, I got more. I got more width. I got better low end. I got more space. I got more effortless presentation. Everything that I liked just got better. So it does reward you when you actually put a little bit in 
And if you don't believe in cables, I don't think it's something where you believe in it or you don't believe in it. It's something where if you've got a system that's over five, six, seven grand, let's say minimum US dollars, euros, it's a very rough number. Just borrow one and just try. If it makes a difference, maybe that's a bad thing because now you, now you might want to spend money. If it doesn't, then you go, okay, well, I don't need it. But give it a try, especially with this amplifier and especially if you can get your hands on something like a Vermouth Black Pearl um, mains cable. Now, I don't think there's anything else I wanted to cover today. I think I've given quite an in-depth thought on it. Um, it's definitely, how I would sum it up is, it's definitely a piece of equipment that you will easily be able to buy and live with. You know, I don't need anything else. And then I would say, if you wanted something else, you know, maybe an extra streamer or music player. Again, you're just going to get a little bit better audio performance, a little bit fu better functionality. Uh, you'll be able to, you know, plug into Rune. In US, I can store all my CDs on there for, for local file playback, which sounds better than streamed file playback. You're just going to get everything a little bit better. Um, and I think if, if you really wanted to upgrade from there, you'd have to spend a hell of a lot. I'd be looking at, you know, for a meaningful improvement, going for something like a TT2, which costs almost as much as the amplifier itself, which then you might as well go for a 590, I guess, at, at that point for an upgrade, because you're gonna get, again, even more of everything that we liked going between the H95 to the H390. So I guess that's summing everything up. I wanted to do this in a conversational-like approach and discuss everything but I have to say top marks super hard to fault and you've seen if you've seen all my reviews you know I always nitpick at something very hard very hard on this one uh, I think not having the rune integration is a nitpick in my opinion but I see why the praise is so high for it and it's a piece of kit that I'm always going to keep around because I think it's the perfect reference point in terms of how does this sound or if I have something I mean a bunch of separates let me let me throw in a bunch of separates and compare that to the H390 how much is this three times the price how much better is it maybe few percent here and there or maybe a lot better but at least I think it's the perfect thing as a reference point well priced performs amazingly and if you need a new integrate all-in-one you're trying to simplify you have to at least audition this one I mean I doubt you'd be disappointed and um, I'm giving it I don't really give scores but I'm giving it pretty much top marks for what it does and what it's meant to do Fantastic amplification that's controlled, clean, neutral, effortless. A DAC that performs amazingly for an integrated solution that provides a nice center image, no digital hard, harshness, um, a little bit warm and rounded and soft and organic sounding, um, which you might really love. I mean, people are really um, fond of something like the Aries or the Holo Spring DAX, they have a little bit of that rounded sound a little bit to them as well, especially the, the um, Holo Audio stuff. I, I find this quite luscious and nice. So yeah, that's everything I have to say. If you have any questions, send them in the comments. I'll be happy to get back to you and I hope my ramblings have painted a nice picture of what to expect and to also let you know that it's a fantastic option. I'll see you on the next one.